All right, so we are live. Welcome everybody to Shacken Gaming and a different kind of live stream this time. So with this week, we're going to play uh, two games actually instead of just one. The main dish is obviously going to be before your eyes. I figured we can uh, squeeze in another game and that game is going to be Sunlight. And we're going to start with this because this is a uh, perfect kind of warm up to the other game. Sunlight it's not really a game, even I have to say it's more like 25 minutes of uh, relaxation and poetry. It is best that you think of it like a journey through a forest in which you're gonna hear uh, all the trees in the forest speak with a different voice, like every tree is gonna have its own voice. And it's gonna be mostly about humans, nature, the relationship between them, I guess. And the uh, cycle of life and death, I would call it. It's best not to try to fully understand this 25-minute uh, experience here. It's better that you treat it like poetry or something. Like, be open to it. Let, let thoughts come to you. Do not try to make, like, a 100% sense of what you're hearing. Let's get into this. Welcome. Are you sitting comfortably? Are you focused and not thinking about whatever's bothering you these days? I'm not here to test you. Please relax. Let your thoughts come and go and listen as they fade away in the distance. For better or for worse, this is where your life has brought you. Looking at a screen, listening to me. Imagine, for a moment, that you've just had a child. It's healthy, but unfortunately also completely blind. For their whole life, they will live in the dark and not see a thing. Their perception of reality is something that you might never be able to comprehend. How would you describe the world to them? What can't be touched or heard, smelled or tasted? How would you describe sunlight? By what it does? or how it feels on their skin, I think I'd play them this piece of music. First composed by Tchaikovsky in 1878, these rays of light have traveled through decade after decade, finally reaching your ears this very moment. You have also traveled far to get here today, but you're only passing through and should probably get going. All right, and that's how we start getting into this interesting teardown is a psychic uh, game, says uh, Denden. Oh, I'd like to tell you a story. story. It all happened to me when I was young, walking in a forest much like you are. Those were days filled with boundaries and rules, of no running, running in the hallways, don't, don't do this, this or that or the other. With, With my world full of fierce discipline, discipline, I walked, walked the, the forest, forest to breathe. One day, deep in the woods, I found a funny-looking tree, crooked, old, and wrinkly. With little work, a few bits of bark became huge ships. I still recall the people I imagined dragged down stream with a sense of guilt. As I gazed back upon the old tree, I noticed something peculiar. It was crying. Every crumple, like eyes closed tightly. Clear drops streaming silently down its wrinkly skin. 
So, so I did, did as children, children do. do. They tasted it. Not because it looked tasty, tasty, but, but to, to figure out what, what it was. was. The, the first drop made, made my tongue tingle. tingle. The, the second, second made it prickle. And, and the very moment the third landed on my tongue, tongue. a the profound sensation spread, spread through my chest. chest. Undefinable, like thirst, both vague and specific, one thing was clear. Something was changing within me. I remember breathing in. And out. Feeding the fire. All right, now the game slows down, shows us a few flowers that we can find, and we are meant to go towards and collect them, and then the voiceover is gonna continue. As I talked about, this is kind of a game about nature, humans, the relationship between them, cycle of life and death, mostly the cycle of life and death, so keep that in mind in case you want to have a few pointers. Let's read some chat, though, before I go on. So the game is out of steam, says Denton. Nice. Kenzie asks why my profile picture is like an egg. It is actually meant to be a cute little monster. We are calling it the uh, Shuck Monster, by the way, Kenzie. We've kind of given it the name. <laughs> so not an egg, but yeah, it kind of looks like an egg. I can guess I get where you're coming from. And you guys are impressed by the voiceover of this guy. Oh, man. A lot of people have complained. Why didn't this first guy, like, voice over the entire game? He has an epic voice. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of fun to actually have all the other guys talk, like... In case you haven't uh, figured this out, each tree has its own voice. So if I get close to a tree, you can actually hear its voice louder. If you hear this game with uh, headphones on, it's uh, kind, of a, kind of a very nice experience. So if you do have headphones, you can put them on. It's actually nice for this game. Hey, Ranum, Welcome to the stream, buddy. <laughs> Shaq wants the arena, says Blaze. <laughs> Oh man, we gotta make, I'm gonna make a, probably at some point a pink version of it just to mess with you guys. Like, this is gonna be the Monsterina one. <laughs> Any case, all right, let's uh, keep on with this game. Let's collect our first flower, continue our journey through this forest. The following day, I walk to a slight prickle in my fingertips. I studied, I studied them closely, closely discovering, discovering secular ridges on the foreign, foreign landscape of, of my skin. skin. The, the prickling soon slipped my attention. It, it would be another be week until it returned, a wave, wave of gentle needles, needles moving over my skin. skin. A limb falling asleep, perhaps? I did not start worrying until it returned for the third time. First making its way up my neck, before engulfing my skull completely from behind. I could even feel the tiny needles covering my eyeballs. But did it not stop there? I held my breath as the small thorns crawled around my lips before spreading into my lungs and stomach. My, my awareness spread with it, and I remember the strangest sensation of my mushy dinner in there, as if I held its remains in the palm of my hand. All right, and now we get to the second flower. I don't think you're supposed, says Kenzie, to hear a voice from a tree. It should come from people. Well, it is kind of a game from uh, for trees and for nature and people, so I'm guessing it kind of makes sense. It is kind of a poetic game. Do not try to think about it in uh, very logical terms. <laughs> Maruki proceeds to burn trees. Oh, come on, Maruki. <laughs> Get in line. All right, let's collect the uh, second flower. Suddenly, my body took control and opened my mouth. An explosion of air rushing into my lungs. The tingling spread with it through my endless web of veins. Soon reaching my beating heart, for a moment I stood in awe of the activity within my body. 
I felt my heart beating faster, and my skin sweating. Your body is your only vessel in this world. And when it misbehaves, the claustrophobia is total. Seek help? I thought. And at that very moment, the tingling needles shot me really down, down through my spine. I felt them scatter through my upper leg. My muscles contracted to lift my knee. My body weight shifted forward, and a shockwave spread from the, from the foot sole as it landed softly on the ground. The process repeated itself in greater detail for every step. I was overwhelmed, but my body kept moving. I did not at all feel like the boss giving directions. It all, it all happened automatically. And I was simply along for the ride. Like you. Along for the ride, as is everybody in the stream, I guess. I don't think... Uh, let's see, Explosion of Varus's Blaze. Yeah, I think that uh, that part was describing the birth of humans, maybe? There's gonna be a lot, a lot about the birth and the death of humans and nature in this game. And it is gonna end on a uh, kind of sad mode, sad note. I don't know if you are paying attention to the music, by the way. This is by Tchaikovsky. This is a uh, this is a very well-known song from more than a century ago, obviously. It is supposed to be one of the, these songs that uh, expresses sadness, happiness, hope and despair all in one. This is kind of uh, considered to be like a special song. That's why these guys uh, who made the game chose it. In any case, let's continue our... Uh, journey through this forest and the cycle of life and death, I guess. The doctor's office was cold and white. Crossing the floor felt like a polar expedition. My parents' distant features of the landscape. I wanted to explain, but was unable. My lips and tongue Engaged in an intricate choreography, myself in the audience observing the words performed. My lips muttered, I'm sure it will pass. While my thoughts were crying for help. And we get to the next flower again. How to donate asks Denden. Thanks for the thought, Denden. I don't have any platform for donations. I used to have like a PayPal, but I don't want to. I don't want to force you guys to do anything like that. I just want you to enjoy these streams for now. Maybe when I get uh, a bit bigger as a YouTube channel, then we'll have things like subscriptions, things like that, memberships. But for now, I'm a small channel. I don't have any ads, any subscription. I'm not gonna even talk about money like at all in these streams. I just want you guys to sit back and uh, relax and enjoy these games. Right, next flower. Let's keep going. The conversation kept going, but I stopped paying attention. Instead, I was following the hands of a clock mounted on the doctor's wall. They were both speeding up and slowing down. I was slipping further and further away, a levitating camera in a video game, merging with the code it was running on, again with the binary with the electronic circuit and so on. I closed my eyes and let my sensations lead me. First, I spent some time with my bones. Among their many functions, I got lost in their continuous breathing, an uninterrupted flow of calcium. Absorbed and released. Even my skeleton was alive and living in and of itself. I could feel my mind clinging to the known, to the cluttering thoughts, the buzzing of memories and fears of the future. 
but, but for each breath, tension was released and my shoulders sunk comfortably. It had certainly felt like I was in there, somewhere behind my face. But I was nowhere to be found, and the more I looked, the more easy I became. And so we get to the fourth flower, if I'm counting correctly. So you can kind of see, there is not a very clear meaning to what this game is about. So uh, for anybody who's joining right now, try not to think too much logically about it. Think of it as mostly poetry, maybe some philosophy mixed in, in there. Mostly about life and death, a bit about humans and nature. That's my interpretation, at least. I don't know what you guys think. Great writing, Blaze says. Yes, yes, Blaze. All right, let's keep with the next flower. When my eyelids eventually opened, they felt as slow as a sunrise. Photons converted to neuro signals shooting along the optic nerve, each carrying a piece of information into the darkness. The brain categorized motion, color, edges, distance, I sat for a moment in the dusk, watching the sunrise. When the world eventually lit up, I was no longer wondering why matter lights up from the inside. My experience had changed from the fire to the light it emits. But it would get much stranger still. Yes, things do get strange when talking about humans and nature. It's interesting, what are you guys thinking about this game so far? Like, for me, it's mostly about, I don't know, respecting the wonders of life, I guess. Maybe respecting nature as humans, not being too anxious about the little things. It kind of makes me think about the bigger picture, this game, like, how trivial the matters are that we are enduring every day, like, most of the problems we have are kind of trivial if you step, take a step back and think about the bigger picture, maybe. I don't know. It's kind of what speaks to me, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's read some chat. Berg says, it's very complicated, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, this is a game. This is always the case with poetry, I'd say, guys. Like, you have to make a sense of your own. Don't try to make it complicated. Don't try to make sense of it. Just, you know, let any thought that you have come to you. That's uh, all there is to poetry, usually. It is a good game, says Durden, and I agree. I should probably be watching this at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah, this this game would definitely put you to sleep. But uh, if you guys weren't here where I was introducing this stream, I kind of chose this game for you guys to relax before we get into the uh, Before Your Eyes game, which is going to be very emotional. And I want you guys to be like uh, fully, fully relaxed for that one. All right, in any case, let's get going. As the moment stretched, I started, I started daydreaming, daydreaming. Or, or so I thought. It began as a as shimmering, a shimmering field, field, creeping slowly in from the periphery of my vision. My vision. The, the hands, hands of the, the clock still moved, moved it, but, but among, among them vague, vague shapes. shapes. Slowly, but surely, I saw trees flowing flow past me, and among them, myself sitting right there in the doctor's office with the vacant expression while walking around myself i was surprised to still see the clock straight ahead myself from the side the clock on the wall the two images were not overlapping they just go exist And you see both nothing and something at the same time. 
I turned to look towards myself, but saw only the face of the doctor lingering somewhere between confusion, concern, and annoyance. However, when he stood his face closer, I was struck by terror. The image of myself had turned to look straight into my own eyes. I felt my own hand reach out towards myself. The weight of my hand landing softly on my own shoulder. Eyes distant, looking at the doctor, looking at myself. Rules and boundaries disappearing. As we get to the next flower. Oh man, this is kind of a sad part of the game when they start talking about the doctor and everything. That is definitely part that refers to humans mostly. And most probably about humans perishing, like the end of the life cycle, so that kind of makes me sad. Alright, let's see, what are you guys talking about? The game before your eyes... Uh, first of all, sorry, Maruki says... We saw two suns at 7am, <laughs> yes. And Kenzie says, the game before your eyes uses a face sensor for the blinking. Oh, I'm not gonna be using a sensor. So obviously you're not getting a first reveal, guys. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting that uh, Kenzie has brought this up. Like, this game, the next one, is gonna be all about blinking. And I'm gonna try to simulate that. Like, I'm gonna try its best experience by actually blinking. Like, really blinking in real life. So I'm gonna do a, like, countdown. Like, a 3, 2, 1 blink. So that you guys can follow around and maybe if you want to experience this game the way it was intended to by the developers, that means by actually blinking with your eyes, then you can do that as well. Alright, for now though, let's move on, finish this one. The fire was spreading. A delicate wave of nostalgia washing over me. Intimate recollection of past sorrow, relationships, education and even medical experience and at last I was no longer alone not in the sense that the doctor was there in the room but rather that we were together in the darkness of my mind a vast numbers of sensations were still flowing but now with the two observers to share the burden. And as we get the uh, the same voiceover actor that began the game, you can kind of sense that we are getting close to the end. And the despair of the previous sentences, like the ones that were describing the death, I guess they become like a hopeful message, like rebirth, things returning back to nature and the entire cycle of life and death starting again, I guess. At least that's my interpretation of it. Now let's see some chat. It's fine, you're probably gonna blink because of the tears. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, I could not play that game with a camera. Like, you would, get, you would see me sad. Like, oh man, that would be a horrible game for me to reveal my face or something like that. <laughs> ah, you're gonna see what I'm talking about soon enough. Let's get to the finish line. Somewhere out, out of sight, a hand picked me up. And as I kept breathing, the fire kept spreading. Soon it swallowed my parents, sitting in their chairs, doubting my story. I felt contradicting opinions and ideas coexist, but not in conflict. Different notes in harmonious chords shaping a balanced, indivisible whole. More clouds spread into my vision, and more sensations through my body. The music was evolving. I looked at my hand. Five fingers against the surface felt no different than five bodies or minds. Branches becoming, becoming aware, aware that they were connected to the same trunk all along. Their experience my own. All of them present in my mind. 
Right, as Maruki says, the humans will end themselves soon enough. This is the cycle of life. Well, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, humans are just one tiny part of it, I guess. Who knows? I mean, we tend to think ourselves as the center of the universe, but that's definitely not true. <laughs> All right. This might be the final flower. The prickly kept spreading. Each needle on my skin, another presence in my mind. More and more observed with sharing the burden. A vast number of sensations flowing. My world, like musical sunlight, just passing through. Every individual going about their business, strangers on the street, unaware that they were all each other, the surroundings. And me. I knew and felt in all as I knew and felt myself. And I could no longer feel contempt, or that, or that anyone was somehow less deserving. There was no longer me and you, no us versus them. It was all just me. An interesting message there about everything coming into one, I guess. Would you think about it in like a uh, biological sense? I kinda, it kind of makes sense. Like everybody is just molecules. In the end, we are born from it, from the earth, from things like that, from molecules, and we become them even as we die, feeding, I guess, the earth again. I don't know. <laughs> this game kind of evokes all kinds of uh, poetic senses in me. As I kept breathing in and out, each new breath pushed me along a ubiquitous landscape that was simply too beautiful to ignore. What lay past each tree and beyond every hill was another idea. I knew to be true. Mountains, transient shadows of matter flowing through time. Slowly, from one point of view, but for the mountain itself, oh boy, it's in a hurry, like everyone else. Both the whirlpool and the stream. An expression of energy floating through empty space. All experiences merging to one. There I was. All of us, you, me, I. The light that shines through the film. All else is smoke and mirrors. I'm having another existential crisis, says Maruki. <laughs> kind of normal for this game, I guess. Damn, this stream is gonna be deep, says Kenzie. Yes, it is indeed. Especially the next game. And the fact that we think we are the center of everything, says Maruki, states how greedy humans are. Although I would say, Maruki, like, think about somebody who's greedy. That's like kind of a my hopeful message to add to this comment. Think of somebody who's greedy at his like very last moments of life, like when he's about to die, then he suddenly becomes much less greedy, then he becomes all about, you know, giving, leaving something behind, people to remember him by, and definitely that's not his greed. It's definitely something much nicer than that, so I guess there's a hopeful message for you. People are greedy, but uh, not throughout their entire lives. Like, as children and as elderly, about to depart, we become less greedy, I guess, is what I'm saying. As with all stories, this one also ends. Not because this story has an ending, but because it keeps moving, leaving us behind. My body kept living like yours will, with surfaces preserving its illusion of separateness. This screen, our 
very own eyes. I couldn't tell if I ascended or dissolved. I'm soaring through space, but unable to move nevertheless. And as I turn in orbit, the boundary between light and dark keeps moving. A cascading wave of thoughts arriving at dawn just to slip away to dusk. Right, and so we arrive at maybe the final flower, let's see. As Kenzie says, a random thought, if you buy two cake and stack on top of each other, would that make you have one cake? <laughs> oh man, you guys are having all the weirdest thoughts during this game, I guess. <laughs> Which is kind of understandable. by my closest. So, so even, even though, though you are another part of me looking back, you will always be a stranger. A moat of resources from my exploitation. The branch is cut. Our hemispheres separated once again. Skipping along the surface, never sinking in. The inconsistent dash of beauty between the noise, picked up by a stranger with good intentions, and with it, sentenced to die. I don't care who you are or how you found me, but we are both reaching in. A few lonely rays venturing through space in just the right direction. Absorbed on our leaves, stored as sweet sugars and exhaled as crisp and creamy oxygen. And while the light warms our skin, or while we wait for the next sunrise, we breathe in and out. All that matters is that you are here and now. And for a moment, we are together. together. You and me as one. Like, like we always are. are. And we always will be. As the screen dims down, and we finally get out of the forest, only to come to terms with the end of the life cycle, I guess. No more trees. But as the game said, it's not the end of the journey. It's just the end of our journey, I guess. Lots of deeper meanings in this, in these closing words. And now we get to a field here, with no trees. And you're soon gonna see, I think, lots of flowers laid down. Let me see if I can find some. This is supposed to be the end area of the game. Let me see if I can find some flowers first. That's where everybody comes. They leave their flowers. And they also post a message usually. Unfortunately, right now, I cannot seem to find any. Let me see if I can. And then I want you guys to think about maybe a message that we want to leave. Give me some good quotes. And I'm gonna write the best one in this game. 
I think I cannot find any flowers because I've come to the very edge of this forest. So unfortunately, I guess we're not going to be able to read other quotes from people. But suffice to say, let me paint you a picture. Everybody like gets out in the forest and they leave their flowers on uh, these tree trunks. Like these tree trunks probably show you the uh, end of the life cycle, I guess. And then they write a quote. So everybody who finishes this game can actually leave his mark at the very end of it, which is nice. It's a nice touch. I love it when games do that. In any case, we cannot seem to find any other flowers. So maybe I'll tell you a bit uh, of what I read in the first playthrough. Like I saw people leaving hopeful messages, like, you know, about life and death. I saw people leaving funny messages as well, <laughs> you know. The first message that I left was uh, Shakum was here, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. But now, let's see. Now I'm going to stand here. I'm going to have to give our own quote. And I want you guys to uh, chip in here. Let's see. I'm going to give it the first good quote I read in the chat. I'll let you guys think about it for a sec. Give me a good quote and it will stay in this game forever. No, Maruki, no, I would like cheese. <laughs> Give me something deeper. That's the wrong hole, Billy. <laughs> oh, guys, you want me to, to leave a funny quote, I guess, don't you? All right, let's see. Maybe I'll combine these two. Let's see. I would like cheese, and that's the wrong hole, Billy. <laughs> I will make this end, too. There is no cheese in this hole, Billy. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of silly. Jeez. Are you guys fine with that? Do you want me to write something else, maybe? I'm going to give it like a good 10, 20 seconds so you can think before we leave the silly message here. <laughs> Everything will end, says Maruki. That's much better. You know what? Let's combine those. Let's leave a deep message. Something for other people to read about. Everything will end, says Maruki. Let's see. And I will add something to it. But then start... Oh man, it's kind of tough writing over my controller here. <laughs> Let me get this out of the way. But then start all over again. How about that? Is that a good enough message? Everything will end, but then start all over again. I think we're good. I think that's a good final message to leave for other people to read, maybe. All right, let's submit this. And that is the end of our journey in this little, uh, in this little game, I guess. So what did you guys think about it? before we move on to the next one. Did you like this one? 